What's up YouTube? This is a Wind One E2 e-bike that has been modified. I'll show you the logo there if you don't recognize it. Wind One E2. It's been modified with a 60 volt 20 amp hour battery and a far driver controller and a new hub motor from Looney. I'll put all the links in the description uh, to what we bought. It's working out pretty good. It did take some customization. Um, the Lunyi dropout was 180, like three, just kind of random. The uh, Win One E2 is a 175 dropout, but it's pretty strong in the supports, like right here. So we felt comfortable just kind of putting some tension to, to pull the uh, dropout apart and then drop this in. We put um, one of the shims on the bottom to help as like a torque arm. But these are such, I don't know what you call them, beefy uh, dropouts that I'm not sure if a torque arm will really help, uh, but we might add one as well. These are just off of BMX uh, that we had. We have not put um, the chain link back on it. Gonna figure out if we're gonna try and have a shifter or not. Probably not. Just don't really need it. Uh, the brakes took a few shims here, just washers to space off. And you know, that's kind of maxed out there, but it's all straight and works. Um, the separation for the uh, controller, actually the wire length worked out great. That's another thing to point out. This, I mean, there is maybe maybe a half inch to play right here. Uh, so that just ended up working out because of where we put the controller. Um, I say we, we're working on this as a project. Um, the bottom of this, so the, I'm gonna kind of show the bottom side of it. So there is originally a plate that goes all the way along this and covers up that whole spot. This part was a natural kind of air gap that was already there. Um, so we had to add this small plate to the original bolt hole to space out to the uh, far driver hole. And then we only used one of the front corner holes for the far driver, so it's attached at three points. Uh, but it gets airflow through the bottom, hasn't really felt warm at all. It's, uh, it's over spec that is 300 amps. And we were told by the Looney people to keep the hub at 80 amps, even though it's 4,500 watts. Um, you know, just trying to play it safe. Right now, the bike as it is gets up to about 50 miles per hour um, topped out and that's a conservative tune on the far driver. Uh, no, no field weakening or anything like that. The hub motor does not have a temperature sensor so that's kind of a drawback but you know as long as you keep it conservative I think it'll be okay. Um, this has plenty of room here. We did pull out all of the stock um, battery mount that went in there. It's pretty easy to do. Once you pull off that cover there, it exposes the kind of the, the routing of the wires. A lot of the original wiring is still in here, uh, but there's enough space. I mean, it's just, just that foam and this foam front to back. So that works out pretty good. Um, we've built a plastic plate that's going to cover up all of this side uh, so that it kind of has a stock appearing look. That's kind of the goal is not to make it look too modified. Um, what else? Oh, we've lost the, the brakes and headlights do not work. We have a module that, you know, converts the 60 volts down to uh, 12, but we just need to wire that up and try to do something clever because this used to be like a, a running light that was like low, like a medium intensity. And then when you hit the brakes, it went to full brightness. So we want to kind of recreate that with some kind of a, a relay and some electronics. Um, this up here, Again, links in the description. I got this, um, you know, the switch, the lock, and the voltmeter and the twist throttle. It's all one assembly um, together with this. And he was great to work with um, because he provided the hall sensor connector that I needed. Actually, this guy right here, um, the, the connector type, he was uh, nice enough to provide. So a huge shout out to him um, for the mating connector because the Looney motor came with some generic just you know default china spec connector and the far driver came with a nice waterproof connector so i wanted to match up with that another uh warm tip as those who've read chinese manuals know what that means um color coding is not what you go with um so i got the 
the signal names uh, from the hub motor manufacturer and colors have nothing to do with it. So you just got to line up phase A, uh, A, B, and C mapped to the far driver UVW. Um, I just kind of took a guess on that. Either that or, or Auto Learn figured it out for me. Um, and then the hull, again, the colors were all totally different, but it was uh, phase A, phase B, and phase C. Those just, uh, those just mapped over. And then the controller actually sends out 12 volts for the hull sensors. The Loon Yi uh, motor recommended 5 volts, but I found out from uh, the guys on Endless Sphere that that's just a basically a transistor. It doesn't care what the reference voltage is. It, it has a pull down resistor and, and figures all that out. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the connector I went with, I can see it. Just uh, tried to hide it up. Oh, shoot, you can't see it, sorry. Uh, QS8, just the standard connector on that. Um, let's see, what were some other issues? Uh, I mean, not much. I mean, we had to cut out, to make this fit, we did have to delete one of the routing I guess um, retainers that this frame has. I'll show you an example of one. There's one right there. It's like these little um, tips that come out and then you put the wire on the bottom side and a zip tie goes through the hole and holds it all together. So we had to grind off one side and the other side and then it just kind of broke off and that's up inside here. Um, all the cables are, are back up in here right now and there's still enough room back up in there to put the 12 volt regulator for the headlight and tail light. Uh, let's see what else uh, one weak spot we found on these win one e2s because uh, it's kind of I mean it's kind of sketchy modifying a, a heavy bike like this I mean it's heavy like it's a it's a two-person lift unless you're even if you're big it's still awkward to lift because it's so so big and heavy um, but the the front forks let's see if I can simulate it uh, this is rear brake I think yeah um, they basically rock back and forth so we'll kind of do it like this and it's hard to really tell the video and just me but right here there's basically like a pivot point um so the bottom half wants to wobble back and forth relative to the top tube and i mean that's this is the only point connecting a wheel to the top half uh i've looked at aftermarket forks but they all say that uh number one complaint is that's the weak point there on the aftermarket ones um, basically they just they, they shear backwards here so this bike is is not being used for any off-road it's just uh paved paved paths and so forth um oh tires that we added on the uh win one stock tires are just garbage anybody that has ones figure that out they work for a while uh they don't stop anything from from sticking through them and they wear out pretty fast too so these have been pretty good um, like Dave, we've put uh, quite a few hours and miles on them and they still look really well. Um, they, can, they can work well with low PSI, which you know, makes for a little more comfortable ride. Um, let's see. Um, I think that is it. So any questions, post them in the comments. Um, like I said, we haven't get, have not gotten aggressive with the tune yet. Uh, the motor manufacturer says 80 amps. The battery can source 120 continuous and the controller can supply 300 max is what it says. I think that's pulse, but, um, but more, nowhere near that. So it's all kind of over spec with the goal of being safe and trying to keep the temperatures low. But other than that, it runs pretty well. Um, tune wise, we haven't figured out too much what to do here other than three is just max speed. Uh, two is max torque, uh, but with a lower speed. And then one is just kind of a, a cruise, like 20, 25 mile per hour top. Uh, but that's about it. Um, we'll try to show you a video in the next one after we put all that together, kind of have a part two that goes into it. And if there's any lessons learned that we have from it, we've gotten about maybe three miles on it so far. So, so not too much together with it. So a uh, shout out to the other YouTubers that have helped uh, Cal the Cool. He was uh, inspirational in this build. I was gonna duplicate his build, but uh, didn't like the spoke concept in the back and didn't feel comfortable doing that ourselves and having it last for a long time. Uh, it seemed like his was just kind of a, a short-term fun and then, then he might have taken it apart. Uh, but I liked how beefy that was. I mean, it's heavy, uh, but sometimes heavy is, is what lasts. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, we've already uh, broken one of these. Like you see, this is the stock um, brake lever that comes on these bikes. We replaced it with one of these um mostly just because we're cheap and, and that worked 
Um, but if these bikes fall over and they land on this, all that weight just shears those or bends them really, really badly. But this, this swapped out easily and fit, and it's, these, these are really cheap. They don't have the electrical sensor that this one has on the bottom, but as long as we have just one, that's enough to drive the brake light. Um, yeah, that's it. Good luck and happy modding.